All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. Last time we left off with Mosquito Sting, the Gestapo, talking about uh, the Gestapo headquarters bombed by, um, by mosquitoes. We're now on to British and Canadians invade Walkren? Walk Walk I think it's Walkren. November 1st, 1944. Storm Dutch Island. On November 1st, British commandos and British and Canadian infantry landed at Flushing and West Kapal on the islands of Walkern. This operation was launched in order to clear the enemy from the approaches to the port of Antwerp, the use of which was vital to the Allied armies fighting on the Western Front. The Flushing forces crossed the Schlet estuary in assault craft, and although enemy fire from shore defenses was less fierce than anticipated, many submerged obstacles caused the loss of some landing craft. After very stiff fighting ashore, British and Canadian troops had cleared most of Flushing by nightfall. Although the Royal Marine commandos met deadly opposition at West Kapal, West Kapali? I think that's actually how it pronounced. And many landing craft were sunk. They charged ashore through a gap in the dike, captured three of the biggest enemy batteries, and soon established a firm beach bridgehead. Pictures show right here a, a tank landing craft approaching beach at West Kapali. So you can see that right there is what they're talking about, and many other smaller landing crafts. Um, and then at the bottom left, so right here, um, British commandos advancing along waterfront at Flushing with shells bursting ahead. Yeah, so you can see the commandos, they're running up, running up, and there's the huge explosions from shells that are hitting right in front of them. And then at the bottom right, evacuating wounded at Flushing. Yeah, obviously they got to get the, the wounded off the front. Got to get them to where they can get some medical help. Um, and they will. They'll get these men the help that they need. Street fighting in Athens. November 3rd, 1944. Casualties mark civil strife. As Athen police and demonstrators fire on one another, both sides fling themselves on the ground to avoid being hit. In the picture below, a left-wing demonstrator lies sprawled in a gutter. The Greek Civil War did not end until January 11th, when a truce was signed after Britain's Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, had intervened. So yeah, you can see a lot of people lying down, hoping not to get hit. They're hiding. Now, hopefully many of them didn't get hit. And like they said here, you can see one guy's hiding the best he can below on the edge of a street. Yeah, the Greek Civil War, um, as I said, it lasted quite a while, January 11th still. But thankfully, they got it solved. And and I, I don't remember. Somebody would have to tell me in the comments if they know exactly uh, the casualties of the Civil War. I know it was... Definitely violent. Civil wars always are. But um, how violent was it? If someone could let me know in the comments, I'd really appreciate that. Commander of the 8th Army in Italy. November 4th, 1944. Successor to General Lessi. Lessi? Uh, Lieutenant General Sir Richard McCree, center, is shown leaving Greek headquarters on the Italian front with Colonel Tasklatots. Right? Like right there. Uh, and other aides after a visit to a Greek brigade north of Rimini. General McCree succeeded Sir Oliver Lessie, a commander of the British 8th Army in Italy. General Lessie, former commander, took a post in Southeast Asia. Yeah, so... Um, this guy... Obviously pretty important then, if he's successing General Lissy. Um, I actually 
don't think I've ever heard of him. He, uh, the you know, when we study uh, both in history classes and things like that, when we study World War II, we don't really get into the small nitty gritty as much as I think we should. Um, you know, things like the Greek Civil War or what's going on in Greece. It's just like, oh, and, uh, you know, Greece was liberated and it's like one or two pages and it's nothing um, very severe. And it's like, that's a big part of this war, you know. Yeah, the Allies coming through France and getting on the Germans. It's a big deal, but it doesn't really matter if the other places are not also taken. If they're not also freed and liberated. And how they got liberated is just as important. It's important to know. It's important for these people. But it kind of just gets brushed under the rug. Behind the German Lines, November 1944, on the receiving end of Allied fire. This captured German photograph shows SS Grenadiers seeking shelter from American heavy artillery behind a high stone wall. Under attack on their own frontier, these Germans appear sullen and unhappy as they wait out a violent Allied artillery barrage. Yeah, obviously, uh, artillery barrages, you're going to get to any cover you can. And if they can get behind these walls, that's going to be good enough cover. And like they said, they don't look uh, too happy there. But that could be for a multitude of reasons. One, they're under fire. Or two, they're getting their picture taken. You know, some people don't like their picture taken. I'm sure these German soldiers uh, didn't either. Leaving the Horrors of War November 1944 Dutch children are evacuated. As the war swept into the Netherlands, the lot of children was particularly hard. Thousands of them had to be uprooted from their homes and evacuated to areas of safety. The youngster above, with the improvised stockings and a huge suitcase, is waiting for a lorry which will take him further from the terrors of battle. The little Dutch girl is clutching a bag of candy, which was given to her by an Allied soldier. Yeah, um, it's important, important to point this out. Obviously, yes, the people that are fighting and dying, they suffer the greatest. But also who suffers are children in the middle of the war. Um, you know, for a kid, this is it's scary. Loud explosions, guns going off. Um, things that you really shouldn't ever witness as a kid. And I'm sure these people, and these children, it was hard. You know, this is an important part of their development stage into becoming people. And they had to witness the worst war ever. I hope they grew up okay. A Prayer for Nazi Victims November 1944 Hollanders Kneel in Grief Villagers of Lendi, near Eindhoven, kneel and pray in the street for four victims who were killed by the retreating Nazis. In a picture below, another kind of victim is shown in Ninjemengen, stocking factory, which was converted into a refuge for the aged. Yeah, it's nice of these people um, praying. It sucks that the Germans, when they were retreating... They killed the, these people, you know. It wasn't necessary. But to the Germans, they probably thought it was necessary, but it really wasn't. They're just civilians. Yeah, they could have impeded, but still. And yeah, so this is another part. Um, kind of gets brushed under the rug somewhat. Doesn't get talked about as much. The Germans, you know, and I would talk about uh, the Holocaust and its horrors. Uh, one of the groups that was also very affected was the elderly. Um, being someone that studied, uh, that studied in, uh, gerontology, so the study of aging, uh, nowadays we call them uh, older adults, but obviously at this time, still call them elderly, but, um, yeah, the, uh, the elderly would also be very affected by the Holocaust. Um, they were seen as infirmed, uh, lesser, and it's just awful. You know, these people have lived for a long time. And, you know, they they were lucky to live this long. They need a little extra help. And to the Nazis, they were treated like trash. And 
some cases. The war uproots German civilians. October 1944. Families become refugees. As the war was carried into the Reich itself, it was now the turn of the German civilians to experience something of what their fear had mercilessly inflicted upon millions of innocent people elsewhere in Europe. The pictures on this page show German families on the move as Allied progress overwhelms their towns and villages. At the top, a typical German housewife takes her belongings to safety. And you can see she's got the cart loaded up. She's got all her things in it. Looks like allies are watching her. She carries them away. And then at the bottom, civilians leave a fighting area. And yeah, one of the, obviously, once again, people that also suffer are the civilians in the way of the war. You know, these people didn't necessarily fight, but they're still getting affected by it. And to a degree, it is it is good for them to see the horrors of war, but it's bad that they have to suffer the horrors of war, if you know what I mean. Um, really, the only way to stop a war is if the civilians realize how bad it really is. Uh, and the German civilians are getting a taste of it. They're not enjoying it, but um, the Fuhrer, he won't give up. Not until the very, very end. And with that, that's going to do it for this video. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Tell me what I can improve on. I always appreciate your feedback. And as always, subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Thank you.